This is episode 13 of Spiritual AF with Pixie Rose, the podcast for people going on their spiritual journey, knowing that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Welcome, magical people, to my podcast, Spiritual AF. I'm Pixie Rose. And if this is the first time listening, thank you so much. I'm so thrilled that you've come across this episode. I know it's going to be a really powerful one. And for anyone that's been following this journey of this podcasting world, thank you so much for your support. I'm so, so grateful. Now, this episode is all about the rise of the feminine. And I planned to to do this episode for number 13 because the number 13 is said to be unlucky usually that's how most of us know the number 13 is that 13 is is unlucky but the number 13 is actually said to be the number of the divine feminine Patriarchal religions created superstitions around the feminine to bring down the feminine. This fight for power between the feminine and the masculine has been happening throughout our human history since the dawn of time. Certain religions describe the creator, God, as a man. And biblical stories state that first there was man and then there was woman. But the earth... And the third dimension has always insisted on balance. So it makes sense to me that man and woman, Adam and Eve, were created at the same time. Somewhere along our history, we lost that balance. And the masculine has taken control and oppressed the feminine. Even looking at Jesus... Jesus had found his feminine counterpart. We hear nothing about Mary Magdalene in traditional religions. And even some stories suggest she was sinister. But she was equally divine as Jesus. But only Jesus is worshipped by most. After the takeover of the feminine and imbalance was caused, 13 was then known to be bad luck. Just as many symbols of the feminine unknown to be unlucky and there is a reason for this which is the point of this episode we are working towards shifting these notions and ways of thinking the women that work with the goddess this is part of their soul calling to help empower women to raise the feminine back to her natural state and this is in order to bring back balance to this human experience again so 13 is not bad luck it is a feminine number friday is a day associated with love and the feminine so friday 13th is a sacred day to honor women 13 represents the average number of women's cycles in a year there are many cultures that never lost this honoring of the divine feminine here in australia there is sacred land to the original custodians of the land that is protected and some of these sacred sites are for women only and the indigenous men men always respected this and still do to this day there is sacred land called the den of nagan which is sacred to the gunai kurnai people the traditional custodians of the land that i'm living on and I, if you want to learn more about this, I did a channeling video over on my YouTube channel, which is just Pixie Rose, and I'll link that in the show notes. Hinduism also honors the goddess, and yet a lot of women in that culture are still oppressed in many ways. The divine feminine has always been considered to have access to intuitive abilities especially around the time of her menstruation. And the masculine has feared these gifts because it is unknown to them. We fear what we don't understand. And women in general can be difficult 
for anyone to understand. We are cyclic beings that shift and change throughout these cycles. And the only way to understand women is by understanding these cycles. When this fear was created, women were oppressed. We find example after example of the feminine being dishonored, mistreated and destroyed. Go back to the time of Atlantis and Lemuria. Atlantis was a masculine ancient civilization and Lemuria was the feminine. The feminine were actually the leaders in Lemuria. And the people that were incarnated at that time are remembering how those from Atlantis infiltrated Lemuria. And again, with this theme of wanting to understand their intuitive gifts. But the Atlanteans wanted to use these gifts to further their own advantage. Witches is another massive example of the feminine being oppressed and destroyed. The many, many women who were killed during those times of the witch hunts. The word witch actually stems from Old English words wicca, which is the masculine, and wiki, which so W I C C E, which is the feminine which simply means wise ones. And then in Middle English, this was then known as witchy. So W-I-C-C-H-E, which referred to magical, both magical men and women. And then other words like wizard and warlock, sorcerer, they were then created afterwards. It was 16th century that the spelling was changed to witch, as we know it now, and only referred to women. So many women were executed because of the term witch and for going against the Christian and Catholic religions. These women were called witches because they gathered under the full moon or because they could heal people using herbs. The first witch was Hecate, the goddess of magic and astrology. The rise in the male-centric religions and patriarchy meant that powerful women became demonized. The masculine turned it into a war for power. When this was never the case, the feminine created balance and never vilified themselves as the stronger ones. The word negative has also been used as a way to describe bad things, but negative is charged by the feminine. We live in a world of polarity, which means a world that has positive and negative charges. So think of a magnet. The positive end of the magnet is positively charged. And this is the masculine. This energy is giving and sending energy. The negative end of the magnet is the feminine side and this is the receiving side so this is how out of whack we are as feminine and masculine when you look at those main energies the feminine is the receiving side and the masculine is the giving and yet we as the feminine find it very hard to receive it's very interesting when you look at that Like our basic natural instincts as women is to give rather than receive. This is something that we need to learn to change and shift within ourselves as women and as the feminine is to learn how to receive. And the masculine needs to learn how to give. So me as a woman, I have both masculine and feminine within me. Within myself, I need to have balance within these energies. In my relationships, there is also a need for balance of the feminine and the masculine. So in my relationship with Hayden, when I'm in my feminine, he will be able to step into his masculine. And when I am in my masculine, he will naturally go into his feminine. And this is another thing that we get very wrong in this Western culture is it is not demasculating 
for a man to be in his feminine. So this may not be an easy concept to grasp, so there will definitely be more episodes all around this. So some more examples of feminine and masculine energy is the moon and the earth are feminine and the sun is masculine. Yin is feminine and yang is masculine. So the feminine is cooperative, emotional. It is the right brain, the right side of our brain. The feminine is flexible. The color black is actually a feminine energy or the shade black. And black absorbs all colors. And this is another example of feminine energies being misunderstood or created as this bad luck or this negative thing so black is actually feminine and the feminine is creative nurturing and journey orientated the feminine is about being now the masculine is competitive aggressive the left side of your back brain the masculine is assertive the masculine is the shade white And again, a lot of spiritual people sort of act like white or talk about white being about purity. And white is actually a very masculine energy. And this is because it reflects all colors. The masculine is active. It's about being in control and goal-orientated. The masculine is all about doing We are now beginning to experience a resurgence of the feminine voice because as we move into the new earth, balance will again be achieved. And there are so many things that are pointing us into this direction of moving into the new earth. The twin flame journey is around this same goal, this same achievement of moving into 5d and moving into the new earth and the twin flame journey is all about union and all about the the balance of the divine feminine and the divine masculine and again there's i'm going to share more information around twin flames in further episodes because that's a huge topic in itself my idea of utopia is a genderless society where the focus is on the feminine and the masculine over being female or male. I believe that we are transitioning to this through our children. The boys being born into this generation are more naturally in their feminine and the girls seem to be more in their masculine. I know my children, for example, my son is very emotional, he's very sensitive He's, he definitely portrays this very feminine nature about him. And my little girl, she is just fiery. Like she's, she's pretty aggressive actually, (laughs) but she is just so about doing and achieving and (laughs) she's amazing. But it's, and I, I talk to other people and their children are the same. So a lot of these children being born at the moment, if you have kids that are under 10 under five especially you'll notice that they they definitely seem to be it's it's not about a boy is masculine and a girl is feminine that's not it we are definitely born with a natural state and I have always felt within myself that my natural state is is being feminine but it has nothing to do with my gender. And also, as I've been mentioning, this is all about balance as well. We both equally have feminine and masculine, or not necessarily equally, but we have both of those energies within us. There's a need for harmony rather than balance. So going back to the feminist movement, which started in the 1800s with the suffragettes and then resurfaced strongly in the 1960s 
So in the 1960s, women felt like they had to act like men to receive the same treatment. And then in the 1990s, another wave of the feminist movement came through addressing the inequalities further and especially around sexual misconduct that women experienced. And women felt more into their feminine and felt that this femininity shouldn't make them any less than a man. Now, during these feminist movements, the feminine attempted to do the same thing as what the masculine had done onto them, which was created a power struggle. So nowadays, the word feminist means to many people to hate men. The feminist movement needed to happen. After so long of women being oppressed, women needed to feel powerful again. But the truth is we always have been powerful. But a powerful woman doesn't create a powerless man. And this is the misunderstood concept that none of us are quite understanding until now. Now, the downloads that I have been receiving is that we as women need men to support us so that we can rise to our power because that is what the masculine does the masculine supports the feminine and the feminine leads right now we as a global collective are experiencing an imbalance of toxic masculinity so there are lots of stuff happening at the moment real experiences in the 3d where the feminine especially are being physically assaulted and physically in a real physical sense being put down by by men but the message that i'm receiving as a woman and to all other women is we do not need to be afraid fear feeds this imbalance and we need to rise above this know that this toxic masculine fears their loss of power but they never had the power in the first place. We have reincarnated in this time and in this place to replay all of the karma and heal it. This is why right now is such a powerful time because we can't move to the new earth when we have karma. So all of our karma is being resolved right now and we are healing it. We are releasing all the karma from our human lives. We are learning how to bring back balance to humanity. And it is happening right now. And for those who have incarnated as the divine masculine in this lifetime, we, the feminine, need your support. The sisterhood for women is also something that has been demonized because they, those who attempted to attain all the power, knew that we were stronger together. So if, if this is something that you as a woman haven't healed yet, if you struggle with your female relationships, you struggle to be around women, this is something that you need to address and you need to heal because we are stronger together and we as women need to get together and combine this innate magic and power that we have as women. When I was in Egypt last year, we of course got to go as a group around to all the different pyramids. And the pyramids are named after pharaohs, but there's obviously a an even older history before the time of the pharaohs. So there was a masculine pyramid, which I probably have to reconfirm because obviously I wasn't super drawn to it. And there was a feminine pyramid. Now this experience of getting to visit the masculine pyramid and the feminine pyramid just blew my mind away. So all the pyramids are quite well looked after there was a time where some of these pyramids were raided people broke into them and and stole things and and even the pyramids have had bombs and stuff dropped on them in the attempt you know back in the day when they didn't know how to get access into the pyramids the government itself bombed the pyramids and uh, different rebellions against the government have done things to the pyramids so it's amazing that they've been able to 
withstand everything that's happened to them. But generally, all the pyramids are in pretty good nick, except the feminine pyramid. So the feminine pyramid is also known as the mother pyramid or the red pyramid. And this is because, and that there's probably more information that I'd love to learn about the feminine and the masculine pyramids. But it's called the red pyramid because inside there's actually a, a red all over the walls and ceilings. So it's it's actually red inside. So you're actually not allowed to meditate inside the pyramids but we managed to as a group which was pretty amazing so there was, there was we we meditated in every single one even if it was just very briefly but there's generally security around and they they don't like it like they will stop you from trying to meditate like if you're just even just on your own you just sort of close down your eyes they'll they'll say time to move on enough enough like <laughs> and and there's many reasons why that is which we will definitely explore more into that but we were able as a group to meditate within the pyramids the meditation within the feminine pyramid was the most amazing for me before we entered the pyramid, we were warned that there would be a strong smell of urine and feces. And this was apparently, we were told by our guide, our, our Egyptian guide, that this was done to ward off snakes. But once I started going through the pyramid and all the, yeah, all the pyramids, so, so none of them were defecated with urine and feces only the mother pyramid so when i went through there i was switched on within my my psychic powers and my intuitive abilities and i was there to to soak in the energy and to give healing and love and energy to the that energy center and to find out more information because I actually went to Egypt and didn't know a thing about the history. So I was going through the feminine, the red pyramid, and there was actually a lot of graffiti within the red pyramid. There was maybe little bits of graffiti from the other pyramids, but the, the red pyramid, there was quite a lot of graffiti. And the smell that we were warned about was so rancid. So once we went through it and got to the very top of the pyramid, it was honestly too much to bear. So we probably could have meditated in the top, but it was so disgusting that I just couldn't breathe in. I remember I think I had my scarf and I just had to cover it, cover my nose and my mouth because and I, I couldn't even stay there long to, you know, even feel any energy because the smell was just horrendous. And the pyramid itself was damaged somehow at the top. So the red pyramid was very damaged in many, many ways. So there was the, the smell of piss and shit and there's graffiti and then somehow it was damaged. So there was parts of the pyramid that, you know, maybe they were chambers, maybe, you know, who knows what they were. They were, they were something once upon a time and then it had been destroyed which none of the other pyramids had that. So as I stood there struggling to breathe, I was told by spirit that we were told a lie and that urine and feces were not placed there to ward off snakes, that this pyramid had been defecated. The mother pyramid was not honoured as it should be, as all the others had been. And I was so incredibly saddened to be in that place. So we did a actually find a place to meditate more in the middle of the pyramid as a group and we started the meditation and then within a minute a guard showed up and told us that we were not allowed to meditate but we we just asked you know please can we just have a few minutes and he amazingly allowed us this so in every other pyramid if if a guard came we would have to move on but in the feminine pyramid i believe that guide wanted healing for the Mother Pyramid as well. And he allowed us to do a group meditation. So we did a powerful meditation as a group. And I sent so much love and healing into that pyramid. And then afterwards, myself and Z, who came on the podcast, we stayed and just 
just sat there while everyone started to leave. So we were last to leave the pyramids. And then as we were climbing out of the pyramids, so if you look it up, you can, it's kind of like a little tunnel that you, you crawl through, sort of allowing, you know, one person on one side to go up and one person on the other side to go down. So it's quite a, t- a tight squeeze going in and out of the pyramid and a bit of a workout really. And as Z and I were leaving the pyramid and, and climbing out through this sort of tunnel type thing, we heard this like boom, boom sound. It sounded like something was crashing down onto the pyramid. It was crazy. So we sort of stopped and was like, do you hear that? And then it was vibrating in there. So it literally sounded like someone was like dropping bombs on this pyramid that we were in. It was so crazy. But we didn't feel any fear. We just felt like kind of excited. We're like, whoa, what is this? This is crazy. And then we finally got out of the pyramid and we look around and everything is just normal. Like nobody was acting, like there definitely wasn't a bomb being hit onto the pyramid, thank goodness. But nobody had noticed anything and we definitely heard this like this sound, this activation and the pyramid was freaking vibrating like it was shaken. It was amazing. So what I felt was that we activated that pyramid by doing that meditation and by sending love to the mother and the feminine pyramid. And this was part of the first sort of thoughts that I had around that it is the time of the rise of the feminine. It is truly the time. It's something that we as women have been fighting for for centuries now. And we're learning that we don't need to fight for it anymore. We probably never needed to fight for it. We just need to love and heal and step into our innate power that we hold as the divine feminine. And it's only recently that I've realized that the rise of the feminine means to finally bring balance. So the power war continues, but now we, the feminine, are reclaiming what is rightfully ours. We are wise. We are healers. We are creators. We honor our cycles and our connection to the moon and the earth and the feminine energies that are still being misused by the masculine are being brought down. The masculine are also realizing that they need the feminine too. One does not work without the other. And I keep, every time I say this, I keep getting Star Wars, the recent movies in my mind around Rey and Kylo Ren And they are examples of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And some people believe that Rey is actually the divine masculine and that Kylo Ren is the divine feminine because he's so emotional (laughs) and he's probably more intuitive. But they are what is described as a dyad in in the force. And they are their union and again this is the twin flame union is to bring forth balance in the force and force is the force is energy so the internet originally is more of a feminine energy and is now completely imbalanced by yang energy with algorithms sales social and political fragmentation power domination and censorship this is the same with our education system it is all measured compared against and competed with and our children are suffering from this lack of fluidity our health systems are corrupt and all natural remedies are censored and anyone sharing natural healing is laughed at and made to look inferior everything is controlled by the money currency which again holds toxic masculinity for power and control. Everyone is tuning into their femininity to balance out the overpowering masculine. Spiritual women are understanding the importance and empowerment of embracing their femininity, and men are feeling into their feminine sides too. The feminine needs to be heard, healed, nurtured, and honoured 
to achieve this balance within our world. Water is another feminine energy that is being misused by the masculine. Bringing this into your attention and changing your actions will help this. Honor your water in whatever form it comes in. Time in a linear motion is a masculine concept. But the feminine knows this is not truth. And when we let go of this notion, the feminine will flourish. So this episode is just a taste of what is to come. So if you loved this episode, make sure you are following because there will be many, many more episodes exploring this further. And for more interdimensional conversations on all things life, death, and everything in between, don't forget, if your wings have been clipped off, they will regrow.